One of the many interesting features in Microsoft 365 is the ability to request files from outside third parties. This is a feature that we've had in OneDrive for a while, but just recently got added into SharePoint. And what it allows you to do is assign any folder in OneDrive or SharePoint as a location where if a third party outside your organization has a link, they can upload a file. And then if anyone else goes to that link, they won't be able to see their files. So it's a secure way to be able to upload files to an organization you're working with perhaps. And there are many business scenarios where this would be extremely useful. For example, if you're managing a bidding process for a contract that you're putting out and you want to get files from different bidders um, providing their documents to you, or maybe you're providing financial advice to customers and you want to collect documents from them before you have meetings with them. There are lots of scenarios where this kind of technology is very, very helpful to have. However, while setting up one or two of these file request locations is very straightforward, if you wanted to do it in bulk for some reason, this would be very cumbersome. So in this video, I'm gonna look at how we can automate this process using Power Automate. If you're just looking for information on how to set up this feature in your environment, then I'll put a link below to a video from Amy Diamond that takes you through that process. And from here, I'm gonna dig into how this works and looking into Power Automate as a solution to automate some of these processes. If this information adds value for you, then I hope you'll hit the thumbs up to like the video and subscribe so you'll see immediately the next time I release one. So here I am in an empty SharePoint document library and I'm just going to take you briefly through how this works. So I'm going to create a new folder. Um, I could just call this test and I'm going to select this folder and then I get an extra option up here of request files and I can just put in a description. I want your files and I get a link. So I can copy that link and if I come over to a new tab, paste in this link you can see this is a location where I can now select some files to upload. So that's very straightforward and that's the way to um, create one of these folders. Um, but if I jump over to Power Automate, um, I've just got a blank flow here and I want to create one of these. You can see I put request SharePoint in here. You can see that I don't actually have a SharePoint action that creates one of these request folders. There isn't anything there to do it, and equally, there isn't an action in OneDrive either. So if I wanted to create these using Power Automate, how would I go about doing this? Well, let's jump back over to our um, site here, and what I'm going to do is just go through this process again. So I'm gonna create a folder, and then before I um, add the request files action, I'm going to go ahead and jump into my developer tools here. And I'm gonna open this network tab that I need. And I'm gonna go ahead and select this. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to request files. And you can see that what my developer tools uh, network tab has done here is actually tracked what requests are going out of my computer, out of my browser, when I do this action. And the one I'm interested in is this one here, this share link. And you can see that what I've got here is a request where you can see that I'm making a request to the SharePoint API. You can see I'm in a SharePoint site. This underscore API slash web shows that we're requesting something to the SharePoint API. And that's specifically the SharePoint API, not the, uh, not the graph API that we're making a request to here. And then I can look at the payload. So I can look at what was I actually requesting. Um, and if you see, there's a number of items here that I'm requesting. So you can see I have a description, I have a few other bits and pieces here, is what I'm requesting to set up that share link. So back in Power Automate, I've put a little flow together here that just uses what I've just found out to create a sharing link. So you can see I've got a manually triggered flow and I have an input here, which I am then using as the folder path to create a new folder in my request files demo SharePoint library. I then go ahead and use the HTTP action for SharePoint to post to that 
API call that we looked at previously. I've just changed it around a little bit because I want to get my list by title. So the title of my list is documents. And then I want to get the item by ID, which is the ID of the output of this create new folder action. So what I'm doing there is looking for my list called documents. And then within that list, I'm grabbing the uh, the item with the ID of the output from here. So the folder that I just created. And then I'm using the share, the share link um, endpoint to create that share link. So this is gonna be a post method and then in my body, because usually when I, when I demonstrate this, generally I'm doing get um, methods because I'm retrieving stuff from SharePoint. In this case, I'm actually creating something in SharePoint. So I need to put a body in here and I'm just following the, uh, the body that we see over here. So I've just copied and pasted this over here. And you can see I can customize if I want to the um, description um, and create that share link there. So once I've done that, I'm just going to pass the JSON that I get back from this request. Um, and one of the items that I get out of this request is a URL. And at the end of this, I just have got that URL back to have the URL of the share link. So let's go ahead and test this. And you can see that's run successfully. And I have here a, um, a URL. So I'm gonna copy that URL. I'm gonna jump into a new tab. Let's paste this and go. And you can see I have a sharing link there. And if I jump back into my SharePoint library, let's just get rid of this. I'm gonna refresh this. You can see I have that test folder one there. So that's just been created. So what kind of use case might you have for creating a link like this programmatically rather than creating them one by one? Well, the key issue that I see with creating these links one by one is unless you were to go through and create a folder, for example, for each customer that you work with, you would then need some additional process in the future to get those files out because people can go in and they can put any name they like against the files that are uploaded. Um, and most of the time that's gonna be accurate, but if for some reason there was a duplication, for example, you might have a, a John Smith that works in three different companies that are clients of yours. And in that case, if you're collecting lots of documents, it might become quite confusing. So it does make sense perhaps if you're dealing with, I don't know, 100, 200, 300 clients that you want to collect files from on a regular basis, then you might want different folders for each of them. So in this example, I've just created a Microsoft list here. It's just a list in the same share point site that I was working in previously and I've created a list of different company names um, a listing of account managers and I have a column called request link so what I want to do here is for each customer that's in my list I want to create a shared folder a request folder that I can send them the link to to upload documents and I want to send the link to that folder to the account manager so they've got it and they can email it out or communicate it in some other way so I've created a flow based on the same outline here but with a few changes so to start off with I don't have any input in my trigger I'm just getting the items from the list that I just created and then I'm going through each of those items in an apply to each loop and for each one I'm creating a new folder with the company name I'm then making my request to the SharePoint API to share that folder to request files I'm then grabbing my JSON and passing that JSON so I can get my URL um, attribute out of there I'm then updating my item and adding the URL request link to there and then lastly, I'm going to send a message to the account manager in Teams to tell them what the URL is for that request files link. So let's go ahead and test this. And after a few seconds, that flow has run. If we jump back into our SharePoint list, we're gonna refresh this. And you can see I have these links here. So let me click on one of these and just check that that's got a request files link and that that has. So I'm gonna jump back into my document library you can see that I have a folder for each of my companies in my list, and that's where the files would go. 
So this is a really simple example, but you could definitely expand beyond this. For example, you could lock down those folders so that only the account manager or the account team could get into them. Um, you could do this on the basis of creating teams and having teams for those different accounts perhaps, and then sharing out a location in each team's files to be able to request files from the client. There's lots of different scenarios that you could create that um, would be quite cumbersome to do manually. You could definitely set them up manually, but if you were doing it at scale, it would be quite cumbersome. But as soon as you've got Power Automate involved in that, it becomes very easy. What I've shown you here is an undocumented use of the SharePoint API. If you, if you search for that API endpoint, um, you won't find anything um, about it, or well, not very much anyway, that will help you to use it. Um, and so I'm always a little bit reluctant to say that anything that's undocumented should be put into a business solution that you're using in production, just because it could change tomorrow and we wouldn't know. Um, so it'd be really great if when rolling out features like this, Microsoft would commit to adding those, um, those features into the connectors that it delivers into Power Automate um, so that there was an easy way to use them without having to do these workarounds in the background um, that, that work, but at some point in the future may just disappear um, unceremoniously because they are um, undocumented and therefore unsupported features. Anyhow, I hope this was useful to you. Um, please do drop in the comments how you're using the request file features and whether using it with Power Automate is useful to you. Um, I hope this has been useful and added some value. Until next time, bye bye.